What you're about to learn in this short video today will no doubt be alarming, even shocking for some. For others, they'll dismiss it as just a mere coincidence and go on with their lives as if the total solar eclipse on April 8th of 2024 is just another novelty in the sky. They'll not see the warning or this sign in the heavens as anything other than a rare celestial event to dazzle their kids. But the truth is, is that the total solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024 is part of a larger set of heavenly events that seem to coincide with earthly events, serious earthly events of potential biblical proportion. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Staley with Passion for Truth Ministries. For over 20 years now, I've dedicated my life into looking into the Hebraic roots of the Christian faith. In an effort to do Bible things in Bible ways, I've learned in the process that the calendar that God uses is not the same calendar that we use today. I've learned that the holy days that God gave His people are not the same as the holidays that were given to us by the Roman Gentile Church. His feast days are powerful, all about Christ, are prophetic in nature, and transformative in practice. In short, they have revolutionized my entire life, the life of my family, and millions of believers around the world that have ears to hear and eyes to see what God is saying to His church today. God's prophetic feast days are the foundation for all prophecy. They are the true time clock that brings perfect rhythm to all creation. Try to understand prophecy without His calendar, and you'll no doubt find yourself stabbing in the dark like a blind man, or worse, left behind altogether. Before we begin, let's take a poll to see where you're at before we go any further. If you believe these solar eclipses are signs from God, put from God in the comments right now. If you don't, put coincidence. And if you're not sure, put not sure. The patterns that you are about to see in this short video are how they line up with the Hebrew calendar of the Bible is simply incredible. And if you have ears to hear, it will likely move you to a very specific action. With that being said, let's begin. First of all, I want you to know that I believe that the Gog-Magog War is connected to these rare solar eclipses that we're experiencing. And I'm going to show you exactly how and what I found later on this broadcast. It's almost too hard to believe and could very well alter the way you live your life from this moment on. So be sure to watch all the way through because everything I talk about will critically build to that moment. First and foremost, it's critical to understand why God made the sun, moon, and stars to begin with. And for that, we turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, where it says, Then God said, Let the lights be in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The Hebrew word here for seasons is the word moedim. It does not mean spring, summer, fall, or winter. It literally means God's appointed feast days. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Shavuot, better known as Pentecost, trumpets, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. So the first reason why he put the celestial bodies in the heavens was so that we would know when to meet with him. This is why Paul says in 1 Thessalonians that although the Lord will come like a thief in the night and no man knows the day of the hour, we know the times and the seasons. For that, he doesn't need to write about us. And because these seasons are all about the first and second coming of Messiah, they are intimately connected with prophecy. But the other reason he says they're there are for signs which in Hebrew means a signal or an omen. This means that the sun, moon, and stars were put into place to give us signals, warnings, and to forecast the two times when the Messiah was going to visit earth, once as a humble shepherd and suffering servant that lays his life down for sheep, and the other as a conquering king intent on redeeming his bride. If you'd like more information on the feast days of the Lord, text FEAST DAY to 844-763 9543, and you'll immediately receive a free downloadable PDF on all of them. The reality of God using celestial events is well established. Mark 15.33 records that darkness fell over the whole land from the sixth hour until the ninth hour on the day that Christ died. And that signal in the sky was followed by a massive earthquake that cracked the temple and tore the veil into two that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. Revelation 6.12 says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. Here we see another correlation between an earthquake and a solar and lunar eclipse. 
The moon becoming like blood is referring to a blood red moon, which is when the Earth's moon is in total lunar eclipse. Zechariah 14, 6 through 7 says it this way, It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no more light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. And in Joel 2, verse 10, it says that the sun and the moon will grow dark and the stars will lose their brightness. There can be no doubt that over and over again throughout the Bible that solar and lunar eclipses are not connected to anything good. Even many of the Native Americans have deep spiritual beliefs that total solar eclipses are either very bad omens and or bring a time of transition and rebirth. Throughout the Bible, we see solar and lunar eclipses connected to events that surround major turning points on the timeline of mankind, with most having to do with the end of time. Again, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you a connection how the very same eclipses of 2017 and 2024 are directly related to the Gog and Magog War of Prophecy. It's simply amazing how God has written the end from the beginning and then put the entire timeline in the sky right above our heads every night. In the meantime, though, let's do a quick review of the most famous and rarest of lunar events, the Tetrad Blood Red Lunar Eclipses. They are critical pieces to the end time story. This is when there are four lunar eclipses back to back in two consecutive years. Like Mark Biltz originally pointed out, where it gets really interesting is when these Tetrad eclipses fall on biblical holidays of Passover and Sukkot, two years in a row. When they land on these holy days, this is when we better start paying attention. Like the Native Americans say, wars and rebirth are possible. And this is exactly what we see in history. There have only been eight sets of these blood red moons since the time of Christ. And some of them have been world changing indeed. They can either be a precursor for a significant event or a confirmation sign that the event that just happened was significant on God's calendar. For example, on Passover in 162 AD, a set of these lunar eclipses was seen and the very same year, Rome began a war with the Parthians. In 785, another set showed up on the biblical holy days of Passover and Sukkot, and the Saxon War began. One of the most famous of these eclipses landed on Passover in the year 1492, just two weeks before the Catholic monarchs of Spain decided to declare war on the Jews living in Spain and drive them out of the country, better known today as the Spanish Inquisition. Although not taught in American history, Columbus just so happened to sail on August 2nd of that year the exact date set for the expulsion of the Jews from Spain. And who were all the crew members that he chose to sail with him? You guessed it, Jewish. Why? Because Christopher Columbus was actually Jewish. But that's for a whole nother story. Kind of changes the entire scope of how America was birthed, doesn't it? And for the record, Columbus just so happened to land in America right at the beginning of the Feast of Sukkot, which happens to be when Christ was born and when the marriage supper of the Lamb will be. If you'd like to learn more about when Jesus was really born, I encourage you to watch that teaching. I'll leave a link in the description as well. By the way, make sure you subscribe right now to this channel so you don't miss out on any videos of this nature in the future. All right, after 1492, the next set of Tetrad blood moon eclipses that landed on Passover and Sukkot was in 1948 when Israel became a nation. And again in 1967, during the Six-Day War, when Jerusalem became the capital of the newly rebirthing nation of Israel. Only God could orchestrate such precision. Wars and rebirthing, wars and rebirthing. Then there was the well-known blood moons of our time, 2014 and 15, which didn't seem to bring much war at all, until you look a little closer and realize that after these eclipses, we've had a terror group named ISIS being formed, the global outbreak of Ebola was announced, it was when Israel went to war with Hamas in the first time in Operation Protective Edge in Gaza, and it's when America changed forever with the death of Michael Brown by a police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. His death would set the stage for all the extreme civil unrest to come in the following years that would begin the process of tearing America apart from the inside out which is no doubt the worst kind of war. And of course, do I even have to mention the global outbreak of the C virus that would be used by the dark forces of this world to lay the foundation stones for the up and coming beastly system of the Antichrist. And incredibly, the next time a tetrad of four blood red lunar eclipses happens, it will be on what some say is the 2000 year anniversary of the resurrection of Christ in 2032 and 33, 
with the third of the four eclipses landing on the very day of Passover in which he died. Incredible indeed. And all of this is just the history of the lunar eclipses that fall on Passover and Sukkot on God's biblical calendar. Although some call it the Jewish calendar, it's only Jewish because they are virtually the only ones keeping it. But the truth is that it's God's calendar, and it was given to all that would follow him from the beginning of time, even written in the stars. Now that we can see the prophetic significance of the lunar eclipses, now let's take a look at what all of you have been waiting for, the once-in-a-lifetime eclipses of 2017 and 2024 that form a proverbial X in the middle of the United States. Do they have anything to do with prophecy? Do they foretell the end of the world? We are about to answer that question. All of the buzz surrounding the solar eclipse of 2024 actually started in August of 2017. It was on August 21st, 2017, when for the first time in over 100 years, the sun crossed the entire United States of America, starting in Salem, Oregon, and moving through the entire Midwest and exiting through South Carolina on the East Coast. What was fascinating about this eclipse is that precisely at the exact time that the sun was going down in Jerusalem, the sun was rising over Salem, Oregon, which is the ancient name for Jerusalem in the Bible. There are 36 cities in the United States named Salem, and the 2017 eclipse would go through exactly seven of them. We saw a lot of sevens in 2017, and you're about to see a lot more. With seven being the number of perfection in scripture, it's not surprising we have a solar eclipse going through seven Salems in 2017, and happens to be in the Hebrew year 5777. But most don't realize that eclipses are categorized for ease of recording into what they call a Sero cycle. The solar eclipse of 2017 was part of Saros 145, which, get this, has exactly 77 different eclipses throughout the entire cycle, with the 2017 eclipse being the 22nd eclipse. 2017 was also the 50th anniversary of Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. Exactly 107 days later, for the first time in history, America, through the hand of a 71-year-old president, recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. An incredible picture is starting to develop. Diving a bit deeper, we see even more sevens. Hebrews chapter 7 tells us that Melchizedek is the king of Salem, with Melchizedek meaning king of righteousness, which we know is Yeshua Jesus. So all of this has to do with a perfect king of righteousness ruling over Jerusalem and the events leading up to such a crowning moment. But what's really mind-blowing is the message that forms when you go to the very place where the eclipse reaches maximum totality. The last city it goes through before it reaches totality is Jacob, Illinois, which happens to be in the only area in the United States that's called Little Egypt. The maximum totality just so happens to be a seven-mile radius that includes all of Little Egypt, including Devil's Lake, Lake Egypt, and Giant City National Park. So the last city that it goes through is Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and the next minute the epicenter of the eclipse centers over the only place in the world called Little Egypt after it's gone through seven cities with the ancient name of Jerusalem, you cannot make this up. We will come back to Little Egypt in just a moment, but for now, let's move on to the April 8th, 2024 eclipse, which is the twin sister of the 2017 eclipse. Never before has an eclipse crossed over the entire contiguous United States of America and then seven years later do it again in the opposite direction, forming an X across the middle. This eclipse is part of Saros 139, which has, get this, 71 total eclipses spanning almost a thousand years. It's interesting to note that the only two words that show up 71 times in the Bible are Elijah and Hebron. Elijah being the greatest prophet that ever lived, and Hebron being the burial place of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all their wives except for Rachel. Just like Elijah shows up 71 times in scripture, so does this eclipse. And out of the 71 eclipses, the 24 eclipse just so happens to be the 30th one, connecting it to the very prophetic number in scripture and the age of Yeshua when he started his ministry. While the eclipse of 2017 would highlight seven cities named Salem and find its place of maximum totality over an area known as Little Egypt in Southern Illinois, the 2024 eclipse would up the ante significantly by going through another 26 cities named Salem, meaning that the two total solar eclipses would pass over exactly 33 of the 36 cities named Salem, another highly prophetic number pointing to the Messiah who was crucified at age 33. Why not all 36? I believe he personally left three outside of the darkness 
because there were three years that Yeshua was in Salem, Jerusalem, and it was not in darkness while he was there. So we have an eclipse representing the start of his ministry, one for the end of his ministry, and the remaining three Salems representing how many years the light of Yeshua was actually in Jerusalem. Wow! It's also incredible to learn that there are only seven cities in the entire United States with the name Nineveh, and the 2024 eclipse passes directly over two of them, while four more are barely outside the area of totality. Nineveh, of course, was the city that Jonah was sent to to warn them of their impending doom if they did not repent. There are only two cities in the whole U.S. named Jonah, and the 2024 eclipse passes right over the top of one of them in Texas. Could this be a hidden warning for the American modern name Nineveh to repent from its current trajectory or face the same judgment of God? I believe it is, and the four that are just outside of the total darkness could be symbolic that there is still a chance for us to repent. While the 2017 eclipse hit its maximum totality in a place called Little Egypt, the actual epicenter finds itself right next to two lakes called Devil's Kitchen and Egypt Lake. And against all mathematical possibilities, the 2024 eclipse crosses the 2017 eclipse in precisely the exact place in southern Illinois, with the epicenter, the X marks the spot, being over one single road in the middle of a national forest just a few miles west of Devil's Kitchen. And what is the name of that road, you ask? None other than Salem Road. Incredible. Out of the millions of roads it could have pointed to, it pointed to Salem Road, the ancient name for Jerusalem. While all the attention has been on the two solar eclipses that intersect in the middle of the United States, there was another annular solar eclipse that also crossed the lower southwest of the United States in October of 2023, which just so happened to mark the very first week of the war in Israel against Hamas. When the 2023 eclipse is laid over the other two eclipses from 2017 and 24, something stunning shows up. While most of us wouldn't really connect that shape to anything, an ancient Israelite would have immediately recognized it as the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. And although it's clear that the 2017 and 24 eclipses make an X over America, King David would have said it was the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Tav. This is more than incredible, as the ancient meaning of Aleph is strength of the leader, and the meaning of Tav, the last letter, literally means the mark or covenant. When you put the Aleph and the Toph together, it literally means the leader of the covenant or the strength of the mark. With Yeshua being called the Alpha and Omega, the Aleph and Tav, God is literally signing his son's name across the entire United States, letting us know that the leader of the covenant is coming, that he is the king of Salem, Jerusalem. He's the Aleph Tav judge, the strength of the mark that will soon be on the forehead of his saints, and he's warning America that our light will go dark if we do not turn from our wicked ways. So why do I believe it's a warning? Not only does the Bible connect eclipses to judgment and end times events, but just take a look at what happened in history when these type of solar events happened. When I did a short research of past total solar eclipses that only went through American soil, I was shocked to discover that according to almanac.com, there were only eight total solar eclipses that have happened over the United States since the founding in 1776. And incredibly, all of these are connected to war and pestilence. During the two in the 1700s, there was the Revolutionary War. In the 1800s, that was the time of the Civil War. And during the 1970s, we had the Vietnam War. There is a consistent pattern for thousands of years of total eclipses bringing war and very bad omens. One of the last times that these two eclipses formed an X over the United States was in 1806 and 1811. Three months after the second eclipse on December 16, 1811, was the largest earthquake in the history of the mainland United States, causing the Mississippi River to flow backwards and was so powerful it rang the Liberty Bell over 1,300 miles away on the East Coast. Coincidentally, six months later, the infamous War of 1812 began. Scientists say that if the same earthquake would happen today, it would send a giant earth wave 200 miles in every direction, leveling every building along its path. The X made from the solar eclipses of 17 and 24 finds itself directly over the new Madrid fault line for the first time in American history. But here's where it really gets crazy. Remember when we talked about the Hebrew letter Tav and how it's in the form of a modern day X? Well, Tav is the 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Now watch this. The 2017 eclipse was number 22 in the 77 eclipse cycle, 
And the total eclipse lasted two minutes and 22 seconds over Marion, Illinois in Little Egypt that year. That means something to me personally, as my personal spiritual number is 222, which simply comes from 2 Timothy 2.2 as my life verse. And I just so happened to be unintentionally stationed in Marion, Illinois that year and was the 222nd person to be assigned into that particular place. We all have our God moments in life, and that was definitely one of mine. Okay, are you ready for this? This is the moment I encouraged you to wait for. What we are going to see next is truly amazing, and I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit scary all at the same time. Most believers who follow prophecy have heard of the great Gog and Magog war against Israel that's found in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that happens at the end of time. Most scholars believe that the countries being referenced there are Russia and Turkey that will come from the north to invade Israel. By now, you know that the 2024 eclipse will cross the path of the 2017 eclipse, forming an X across America. But what is less known is the same exact eclipse cycles show up 18 years earlier, six plus six plus six in Turkey, where the book of Revelation says the seat of Satan is. Both forming an X in both countries, both incredibly showing up on Nissan One, which we'll talk about in a moment, and both lasting two minutes and 22 seconds, one in Little Egypt and one in Turkey. Ground zero for the X over Turkey was actually in a city named Amasia. This city just so happened to be the capital city of all the kings of Pontus in the third century BCE and was originally the land of the Hittites of the Bible. All the Ottoman princes, who were actually descendants of Esau, were sent there to learn how to govern during the Ottoman Empire. And according to Wikipedia, Amasia was the location of the final planning meetings for the building of a Turkish army in 1919. Did you catch that? Amasia was the city where the Turkish army was created that would one day be a part of the last great Gog and Magog war against Israel before the coming of the Messiah. Not to mention that these are the descendants of Esau, the long-standing enemy brother of Jacob. Coincidentally, six days after that eclipse over Amasia, one of the largest earthquakes in Turkish history was recorded and 12,000 people died that day. And for whatever it's worth, I felt led to measure the distance between Amasia and the epicenter of totality in the 2024 eclipse here in America and was shocked to discover that it was exactly 6,000 miles on the dot, with six being the number of man and there only being 6,000 years of human history according to prophecy. This mathematical impossibility of the two points on the X being exactly 6,000 miles apart is just too hard to dismiss as a coincidence. Think about this for a second. The only two times in history that Saros 139 and 145 eclipses both cross and form an X is over Turkey and then over America, with one highlighting the very seat of Satan that Revelation says is in Turkey, and the other eclipse highlighting Jerusalem through 33 cities named Salem, and Jacob and little Egypt being delivered out of the giant city in the devil's kitchen? God is sending a message through the signs in the heavens, my friends. And at the risk of sounding like a late night infomercial, we are not finished yet. While the 2024 eclipse is part of a series of 71 eclipses, it is not the only celestial object that banners the number 71. Incredibly, for the first time in 71 years, there is a comet by the name of 12P Pons Brooks that will be passing by Earth. It only shows up once every 71 years and just so happens to show up right next to the sun on April 8th, 2024. And guess what its nickname is? The Devil's Comet. Incredibly, there was a comet visible in 1811 right before the New Madrid earthquake as well. From Devil's Lake to the Devil's Comet. It seems that the Devil, Egypt, Jerusalem, Jonah, and Nineveh all seem to be highlighted by these events. Discovering that there was a rogue Devil's Comet out there made me curious of what the rest of the night sky looked like. So when I went over to Stellarium.com to use their online software to look at the night sky from Little Egypt and Illinois, I was completely shocked at what I saw. Not only did all eight planets line up looking to the west, but the Devil's Comet was also in alignment right with the sun. So what does all this mean? I can't say. But what I do know is all of these quote coincidences are adding up to beat every single impossible odd. But there is one single event still left, an event that hasn't happened in thousands of years, an event so significant 
that if it happens, it will quite possibly be the precursor to ushering in the Antichrist himself. I will report to you what this event is in just a moment. It's going to happen this year. But before I do, I want to ask you what you think all this means so far. Do you think it means that judgment is coming to America? Does it mean war, earthquakes? Tell me in the comments what you think. If you do, tell me how God is leading you to prepare for these things. The only thing we can know for sure is that America has definitely lost her way and judgment will always start with the household of God. Take a look at this verse in Ezekiel that talks about that future judgment and how he places a mark on the foreheads of those who are to be spared. Ezekiel 9.4 says this, Go through the midst of the city, throughout the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. Amazingly, that word mark in that verse is the word Tav, which is also the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The very same letter that is placed on the foreheads of those who hate sin of their land and are praying for the Father's mercy is the same letter that's being placed over the center of the entire United States. The connections that can be drawn from this are numerous. As I mentioned before, the 2024 eclipse happens on Nisan 1, which is a very important day in biblical prophecy. It's not only the first day of God's religious calendar, in 2 Chronicles 29, 2-3, it's the day where we see the doors opened up to cleanse the temple from the defilement of former kings. Can we say today, the defilement of former presidents. In Ezra 7, 9, we see that Ezra leads a large group of people from Babylon on Nisan 1 back to Jerusalem, Salem, in order to reestablish the temple system. It was also on Nisan 1 that the decree went out from Persia, King Artaxerxes, to allow Nehemiah to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall. Not only was Nisan 1 set apart to be the day that the temple was cleansed and rebuilt, but it's also on this day that the new temple, Yeshua, Jesus, was baptized and began to rebuild his own kingdom on earth. Incredible. Although it's significant that the final eclipse happens on Nisan 1, of more importance is that it happens just 13 days before Passover, when God rescued his people out of the original Egypt from certain death through the blood of the Lamb. Is it a coincidence that these solar eclipses over America pass through 33 of the 36 Salem's and the epicenter of the mark of God just so happens to be over a place called Little Egypt right at the time of Passover? I think the handwriting's on the wall. Another exodus is coming, and we need to get ready and understand the signs of the time. We need to repent for our sin and get back to doing Bible things in Bible ways. As a matter of fact, if you have never been to Passover Seder, text the word PASSOVER to 844 763-9543, and you'll immediately receive a free booklet of how to do a Passover in your own home, as well as information on our own live Passover that we hold each year. Or you can go to passionforpassover.com. I also have an entire playlist on this channel called All About Passover, with hours of in-depth teaching on the subject. My friends, there's one more event that these eclipses could be a sign for. It's the sign of the Red Heifer. Most people that follow biblical prophecy know that it is prophesied that the third temple will be in operation before the Great Tribulation begins. The scriptures say in Daniel 9.27 that halfway through the seven-year peace treaty that's signed in Israel, the Antichrist will stop the daily sacrifice. By default, this means that there must be a sacrificial system already in operation for a daily sacrifice to even be offered. And that means that a perfect red heifer has to be offered first. According to Torah, before a temple can be cleansed and put back into operation, they must first sacrifice a red heifer that has not a single white hair and then use its ashes to cleanse all the components of the newly inaugurated temple. The problem is that they've been trying to find a kosher red heifer ever since Israel's become a nation, and it's only been in the last year that all this has come about, and now they have four red heifers in Israel right now, flown on a plane from Texas and ready for sacrifice later this year. I cannot overemphasize just how serious this could be. Starting daily sacrifices would no doubt be right around the corner, along with the revealing of the Antichrist. I encourage you to watch my video on the Red Heifer to learn more about this incredible historical event. I'll leave that link in the description as well. Just like Ezra led the people of Israel back to Jerusalem on Nisan 1 in order to start the temple system back up again, could the 2024 eclipse on Nisan 1 forecast the very same thing for this next temple? It does seem entirely possible, 
and even probable. Life is short, my friends, and eternity is a very long time. He is coming back someday, and none of us are truly ready. While there's countless videos and people out there claiming the end of America is coming and war is at the door, the truth is that God says that He has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. It's also important to remember that He's putting the signature of Yeshua on our country, the Aleph Tav, and placing judgment on the Devil's Kitchen and Little Egypt, while only causing two of the seven cities named Nineveh to go fully dark. This tells me that there is still time before this modern-day Nineveh is judged and I pray that we repent and are spared just as they did. While judgment very well may come, just like in Ezekiel's day, it will start in the household of God first, and only those who have his tov, his mark, on them will survive. Just like the blood of the lamb over the doorposts in the original Egypt was the mark that protected his people from judgment, so God could very well be warning his people again through this mark over little Egypt today. God makes a declaration in 2 Chronicles 7.14 that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. It's not even an Israel versus her ancient enemies issue. It's not a black versus white or a liberal versus conservative issue. This is a simple heart issue. This is a, are you currently seeking his face and hating sin so much that you deserve to receive his mark issue? War is possibly coming, my friends, and it's already at the door whether you know it or not. For we don't fight against flesh and blood, but the evil principalities and powers of this present darkness that rule in high places. If there's anything that I've received in the spirit from all of this, is that God's people have become just like ancient Israel. We've become lawless, complacent, lazy, and have put aside the commandments of God for the comfy traditions and the doctrines of men, which virtually all come down from the Roman church. We've traded the incredible prophetic feast days of the Lord that are all about Christ and have allowed the Roman church to feed us a steady diet of watered down religious holidays that are steeped in paganism. We have forgotten the very Sabbath that we're told to remember and have unknowingly given away all the blessings that go with doing Bible things in Bible ways. We become largely worse than the church of Laodicea and we wonder why we are losing our children to a woke culture and we've all but lost our relevance in society today. If you're watching this and you know that if you died right now, you would not have that mark on your life that would save you from eternal separation from God then I invite you to understand that Jesus Christ, Yeshua in Hebrew, is the Aleph Tav, and He left His mark on this earth in blood so that anyone that will call upon His name and turn from their wicked ways and trust in Him with each breath that they take would be saved. If that's you, I invite you to repent of your sin, acknowledge that you need Him, and give Him permission to make His mark on you. Ask Him to come into your life right now. He will not only do it, He'll make you brand new. Then email us at info at passionfortruth.com and let us know your decision and we will make sure that we pray for you and help guide you from there. If you're already a believer, I invite you to go past the outer courts of religious tradition and begin to come back to the real, raw, and authentic roots of your faith. After all, the actual ancient definition of sin is quite frankly, missing the mark. I encourage you to take the time to learn about his feast days and the blessings of the Shabbat for you and your family. After all, God says it's literally a sign between us and Him, and that's found in Exodus 31, 16 through 17. As it relates to these signs in the heavens, recognize the potential seriousness that's upon us. We are without a doubt moving very fast toward the time of His return. Let us all be prepared and ready for that day. Thank you, my friends, for joining me on this broadcast. Please share this with everyone that you know, and if you're not subscribed to our channel and don't want to miss out on any content like this, Hit the subscribe button right now below and make sure you hit the notifications button so you don't miss anything. And if you've ever liked to partner with us in any way, check out our website at passionfortruth.com where you'll find hundreds of other videos and articles on about every topic that's out there in the Bible. In the meantime, I'm Jim Staley and I'll see you in the next video. Shalom.